Hello, uh, trading has closed on the 15th of May, 2024. As always, we'll do our disclaimer first. We'll go over all calls and make some predictions. It's my trading plan for Thursday, which is May 16th, 2024. And I'm going to be busy in the afternoon. I might be able to trade in the morning, but it's also possible I'm not going to risk any of my own money on the call. If you want to risk yours, please remember my calls can be wrong and do so at your own risk. Don't forget to circle Wednesday and Thursday of next week for Ron David's free simulcast. If you want to order the rules of my system, I need a Gmail address. And every now and then, please remind yourself that my system gives targets rather than precise entries and exits. We look for the pattern with the early low, which is this. Tomorrow should have the early high. Here's what we said. We said the CPI report was coming out. I just don't have the same level of accuracy when these reports come out. We said unless we gap up smartly, we had a lower target. We gapped up smartly so the target stays, but not the time. The market hit a new all-time high today. The last time it hit an all-time high was in early April. A number of very good traders, not just one, contacted me and told me that was it. I didn't think so because we had some unfailed higher targets. One target was the MJT target 52.5906, an ultimate target in that one printed. As we showed yesterday, it's about 150 of these a year, and I have one failure every three plus years, so the odds are pretty good that was going to print. And they're also pretty good at some time, we're going to see 5189.72. We also had a higher target because there were higher prices and futures, which hadn't been seen in regular trading hours. And usually, with some exceptions, of course, the price range of futures and the price range of regular trading hours tends to be the same. So these have been satisfied, and these reasons to expect higher prices no longer exist. That doesn't mean we aren't going to have higher prices. It just means we have to find other reasons for it. During the day, we had an ultimate buy signal. All these squiggles were called false moves. They all retraced, and ultimately we traded higher. So that's played out. Let's look at some DeMarc indicators here. We're in bar 13 on the weekly chart. That's what he says. We're overextended on the upside. Now, it's a weekly indicator. You won't know until the week's over, but it's pretty unlikely that's not going to be bar 13. These aren't perfect and they work more. They have, I have greater confidence when they call lows than when they call highs, but this just says we're overextended here. Another one of his indicators that says we're overextended is on the, uh, the daily chart. We've now gapped over the last TDST line on the daily chart. It's a resistance area which extends one full bar past the line. So this is resistance. If we print another bar completely over this bar, completely over it, that breaks resistance and should lead to much higher prices. The catch is if we do it now, we're going to print a bar completely over the upper Bollinger Band, and that implies you really bit off more than you can chew. So it's hard to see us um, breaking resistance by this criterion. Tomorrow, I like to see more backing and filling first. Also, when you have nine bars up, nine bars of a new set up like this, usually a pause for a while. So it's not a hard and fast rule, but this is one of the places where his stuff says you tend to, you tend to pause. Now prior to going into the odds for a pause here, I think it pays just to review how bullish I am on the market over the long term. This is a huge ABC. The pattern called the low to three decimal points here. I'm looking for 59.75 cash, if not more, before that's all over. 
I know other people are calling this way four. I've seen people saying that was wave, uh, this we call this wave three. They call this wave four and they have all this doom and gloom saying that's the fifth and final wave. That the problem is this is a three wave structure and it's a clear three wave structure. And I've not seen one valid five wave count of that rally. So once you accept this as an ABC and we get a strong wave one, it's not hard to believe we're going much, much higher, even though I think we might stall here. We've rallied up to a new GAN fan line one by one. It's off by a few pennies. I don't care about that. If we're going to continue, we really should gap over this line. So this is just one more sign that if we're going to continue uh, by DeMarc's indicator and by the GAN fan line, you really want to gap up and hold it. I'm just not certain that that's going to happen. We did break over this scan fan one by two line, but you have to follow through for confirmation. If we gap down, never trade over this close, that break doesn't count. Now I've been counting this as wave one. This was A and I'm counting this as a B. The problem is, as I've said, this looks like a five-wave structure, and even though it could be A or B, could even be a B, I think there'd be a clearer count if you count it as a five-wave structure. Now, one way is A or B. I can count it as a three-wave structure, and it doesn't break any rules. It just looks too impulsive to me. I think we should look for some other explanation. We start counting from the um, from the October low. It's not really as perfect as I would like, but you can count that as wave one, which is a five-wave structure. You can count that as wave two, with good fibs. Not as clear five waves as I'd like, but I can count. And that's pretty close to 50%. So the fibs all work if we stop here. And I'm not saying we are going to stop here. Today's action was pretty strong. But if we gap down and start dropping, at least I can explain it. I don't think it's the most likely outcome, but it's a possible outcome. And I think one has to be prepared for that happening. Because at some point I want to see these numbers. Don't forget, we're getting close to Caroline's F15. We're in the range. That's in addition to the wave count we showed. That's in addition to, um, to Mark's bar 13. And his resistance area on the daily chart. So Thursday's pattern has a really low regardless of where we open. Typically, it's a rally day with a high in the final hour. If it's weak, the more weakness should follow in days to come. The low of day was in the first five minutes and the high in the last. So if that's maintained at the open, that's a bullish pattern. It should lead to higher prices regardless of where we close. That's a very bullish pattern. It usually follows through. And if it doesn't, it's quite negative. We've broken through resistance. We only trade past today's close for confirmation of the break. I don't care how strong a break is. If there's no follow through, it doesn't count. Maintaining a gap down tomorrow would change the picture considerably. The break wouldn't count. There's a wave count compatible with a short-term top. The Mark and Caroline indicators remain compatible with a high in this area. I have much higher targets for the rally. That doesn't mean we go up every day. The trend remains up until it reverses. This is just one of the areas, not the only one, which a short-term reversal is credible. I think trying to call a top after a move like this is is pretty dangerous stuff. I mean, usually this thing follows through. But if we do gap down smartly tomorrow and keep dropping, I could certainly explain a top here. 
I'm not risking money on it at this point. But even though I don't know how we're going to open, if we don't follow through and we open way down, I, I'm going to be prepared for a reversal with a stop over the side. So it's the pattern with the early low. Usually it's bullish. If we can't follow through with this, um, we do have considerably lower targets that should print at some time. And that's today's call.